There are many companies around the world who manufacture dusting powders. You know, for example, here in the United States, we've got many, many companies in the UK, in Europe, in Australia, in all different countries, there's many companies, all right? And so generally, as I said, uh, they're mostly called uh, pedal dust or dusting powder. I generally call them dusting powders, but in some countries, people call them pedal um, powders, pedal dust. They are made specifically for dusting flowers and foliage, but it also can be used for painting and coloring paste. Um, so, for example, when Veronica did her um, olives, you know, some people basically would take, like, say, pink powder, and so you could actually take pink powder and you could use that to color your white paste, say, very pale pink for cherry blossoms. So that's an alternative to if you don't have, um, obviously, gel colors, okay? But uh, generally speaking, these are manufactured uh, for, um, for flowers. They are different from powder colors, all right? So when we talk about powder colors, which we talked a little bit about uh, when we talked about the uh, coloring gum paste and things, I talked about powder colors, all right? Powder colors are not milled as fine. So when you actually take powder food colors, um, these are not milled as fine as, um, as, as I said, the dusting powders. And then the other thing is, is the dusting powders are finer. They also contain usually some type of gum, which is a fixative to adhere to the petal or leaf. Um, it also talks about most are edible or non-toxic, depending on the country of manufacturer. Some will be marked edible, non-edible, some inedible, and some non-toxic, and some will not specify, all right? Depends a little bit on the, um, obviously, rules from specific countries, okay? Now, so, you know, like, for example, here, bringing in a couple of, uh, you know, this is a sugar in one, so you see it says edible petal dust, okay? And then some petal dust will, for example, say, like, for example, on this one here, this says, this is my American Beauty non-toxic, all right? Because sometimes with certain colors, um, some colors are going to have things that would be not usually totally edible. Now, different countries have different rules, like for example, here in the United States. Yes, Scott? Question, will powder dust dry out the paste? No, powder dust won't dry out the paste because you're usually compensating that with your, with your um, obviously, vegetable shortening, okay? But um, here in the United States, obviously, we have FDA, all right? You have EEC, European Community, obviously, which is obviously Canada is under the EEC and English um, rules for coloring. Um, and so, for example, a company like in England, we used to import sugar flare colors into the US. And then basically, they were all just, just categorized as dusting powders. And then they changed the rules in the European Community. So then some of them will be marked as basically like non-toxic. And then actually it changed, and in Europe now, um, in Europe, they generally use things, the word edible or inedible, okay? So for example, like talking about, let's say metallic powders, all right, this is a metallic powder from Italy, and this metallic powder here, you see it has on there inedible. Now, we don't use the word in the United States inedible or edible, okay? But typically, when we, uh, something that, as I said, is non-edible, is usually, as I said, like in the United States, we just, uh, we would class it as non-toxic. So for us to be able to sell this in the US, you see this item is a non-toxic product, can be used for decoration or lettering onto cakes. All right, so in the US, this is categorized as non-toxic. But in the, U in the European community, some of these dusts, and especially the metallics, fall into a very sort of gray area. But most of the time, like in Europe, when something is classed as edible, it's because it has nutritional value, okay? Whereas something that is, doesn't have any nutritional value, you know, there's no protein, there's no fat, there's no carbs or anything in there. So the thing is, it just falls into a very gray area. So a lot of things are now categorized in Europe, especially as inedible. But it doesn't mean that you can't use them, obviously, for dust and things on cakes. Now, in some countries, as I said, some countries like parts of South America and some manufacturers in Mexico and certain other places, they really don't have very strict rules there. So a lot of times people really don't know when they're buying things, whether they're buying something edible or basically something that you shouldn't consume. But generally, as I said, I wouldn't ever be concerned about using dusting powders per se. The other thing to remember is, you know, when you're using things for craft or for sugar flowers, you're not going to really eat these, all right? 
so it doesn't matter if you're using a non-toxic product on a sugar flour. Where it is really important is if you're doing things like little flowers from say the filler flower mold, you're gonna pop those onto a cupcake, you're gonna do a unicorn horn and paint it gold for a, a cookie or whatever. Those are really where you have to be more, obviously make sure you use everything that is obviously edible, all right? And so a lot of companies have like, for example, Rainbow Dust have, I'm gonna talk about those a little later in this uh, episode, like for example, they have an edible paint range. Now it's not gonna be as metallic as using a non-toxic one, but it is totally edible. So if I was doing a cookie, that's what I would always use. But for sugar flowers or craft flowers, there really isn't so much of a concern because as I said, you're generally not going to encourage people to eat them because of the fact they contain wires and things, all right? But anyway, so um, we have, um, as I said, regular dust in powder. So in fact, when, when I first started teaching here in the United States, for example, I started teaching at Wilton at their school in Chicago. And when they used to teach flowers, because at that time Wilton didn't sell any dust in powders, so they used to have the, the students use like non-toxic chalk. So they would just use chalks like you'd use for drawing and just like scrape them, uh, like almost like ra scrape them onto a wire um, whisk, a, a wire sieve, and that would grate them. But the problem with that is, is that it's going to go, not be as fine a particle. So as I said, you really want to ideally buy something specific for dusting, dusting flowers. Now, regular dust in powders or petal dust have a matte finish, all right? Um, these come in many shades, both strong and pastel. I would always suggest buying stronger colors and adding cornstarch or corn flour to lighten. Now, so when you, for example, um, like I'm gonna show you here, this is a sugar in uh, product, all right? So this is a sugar in, which is an Indian company, all right? So this is the same company that manufacture Arati's paste. And so they have, for example, this very, very pale primrose yellow, okay? But the thing is, is that you can create that yourself. So rather than buying that, which is basically just a light version, you can just buy a brighter yellow. Now also like some dusts have screw lids on them, like for example, my range and several other companies have a screw, which is very easy to get off. Sugar, the, um, uh, the sugar flare ones in the UK come in a long, tall vial with like a little top. And then these ones here, I just use a little, this is just a little opener for um, a soda can and things. But uh, this works really well just to get the lids off of these ones, okay? But you see, so, so if I wanted that color, rather than um, buying so many different dusting powders, all right, a lot of times I would recommend always buying the stronger of the colors. And then if you want to make like a color like this, you see, um, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take a little bit of your yellow. So just gonna take a little bit of your, your yellow dust. Take a little bit of that. So it's gonna take just a little bit of yellow dust, okay? And then what I would do to that is I would just add some corn uh, starch to this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of corn starch to have here. And just gonna add some corn starch to this, all right? And you can just sort of put it in. Now, just remember the general rule, I what I would normally tell my students is you can always add, but you can't take away. So if you're unsure about the intensity of something, it's always a good idea to just, um, as I said, just uh, try it out on a little piece of paste. Uh, you could even try this out on some uh, uh, white paper, that would work as well. But you'll sort of see how, and so you see you could just, and I could add more cornstarch to make this color. And the reason I say that, there's a lot of companies like in the UK, um, Rainbow Dust. A lot of the Rainbow Dust colors are very pale. Uh, because in England, uh, typically most cake artists don't use a lot of really strong, bold colors. I mean, somebody like Margaret Ellis, who's one of our design team, she loves really bright, strong colors, which are fabulous. But a lot of the, um, a lot of the, as I said, say rainbow dust range is very pale. A lot of their greens are very pale. And that is fine if you want that color, but if you have available to you and you can buy some stronger colors, it's really more economical to basically just use the stronger pigment and then just add white powder, white cornstarch or cornstarch or uh, as I said, corn flour to it to make a paler color, okay? So that's sort of like how you would just reduce it. Then of course, when you're, when you're using dust like this, then what I would normally do is you just would keep them into 
you know, like for example, like a little container like this, all right? So, you know, this for example is my Stargazer base. So this is my American Beauty and Plum uh, three to one ratio, like in book number two. You know, this is a light um, apple green and prairie green mix, all right? One to one ratio. You can obviously use a label maker, or you can just, so this is just light apple and prairie, one to one ratio plus some cornstarch. So that is the same color, but you see a lot, lot paler. And then you could use this on, you know, like your David Austin roses, but you get this really, really soft mint green. So as I said, some companies sell a color like this, but really there's no point in buying it. You might as well just buy a stronger version and then just reduce that with your corn flour yourself, okay? Um, and, but just obviously, just if you're using things on a regular basis, you can mark them like that. Now, the other thing we do um, sometimes, I'm just gonna move that to one side here, there we go. The other thing we can do is we can also use a white dust as well. So if you take, and when you're, um, when you're using dusting powders, all right, so things you can use, like a lot of times when I travel, I'll typically use like a little plastic plate like this. And this little plastic plate means that when we use this, we can then uh, fold this like a taco shell and this can go back into the container. Or you can just buy thin paper plates, just little small paper plates, because then when you got finished with your dust, you could then just pour it back into the container very, very easily. All right. Um, you can also, of course, use like little containers like this. And but you know these would be more for permanent. All right. You can also buy these are for condiments like ketchup and things like that. So you can buy these very inexpensive, only a couple of pennies or cents each. A lot of even dollar store, pound stores sell these type of containers, and those are good for mixing in as well. Now it also talks in here about um, you can also use green with colors on dark. You can lighten with white dust to make the color opaque. So if you take white dust in powder, which we talked about when we did the um, coloring making gum paste, this is titanium dark side powder, all right? So, you know, these are several different companies. So most dust in powder companies usually sell white dust in powder. And what that is, is titanium dark side. Now, when you're coloring onto dark colors, okay? So for example, if you were then, as it says here, that if uh, then adding cornstarch to lighten, and when using green or other colors on dark colors, you can lighten with white dust to make the color opaque. So like if you were doing like a really dark purple flower, or you're doing like a really dark burgundy flower, sometimes when you dust green on it, it won't notice. So if you add white to the green, what it will then do is it will then make the color opaque. Yes, a question? How long does the shelf life? Dusting powders have an infinite definitive life. Um, dusting powders, again, in the UK, you have to, by law, things have to have an expiration date. I have dusting powders I've had for 25 years, and I'm still using them, all right? There's nothing in dusting powders, gel paste colors that will go bad, okay? So those are totally fine. I mean, obviously, you just keep them somewhere dry. Now, so if you take, so for example, some white dust, okay? So if you take some white dust, and then you take some green dust, all right? So I'm gonna show you a little bit of green here. Also, these are just like little ice cream spoons. This is a good way to... And I just want to show you the two, these two uh, things. So I'm just going to show you this actually on a red petal here. So this is a poppy. But um, as I said, so in a lot of my things, I just use the green as is. But the thing is, you can also use, as I said, taking the color. So if we take the poppy petal here, now, so if you just take green, which is uh, what I normally do most of the time, but there are times when I've done like red tulips and things, I use this technique. So if you take this green, you see, and you put this green onto the back of the poppy, it's gonna give you quite a sort of a subtle, quite a subtle sort of green on there, okay? Now, but if you take, for example, some green and white, and you mix the green and white together, so if you ever put like color on a flower and you don't really see the green. Now another time I would use this, like if you were doing let's say an orchid, all right, or even a pansy where you're doing like say a purple throat of a flower and then you wanted to dust yellow in the middle of say a purple or Cattleya orchid's throat. If you just take yellow and dust it on top of purple, you're not gonna see it. So this is where by mixing the white powder and the green powder, or in that case, yellow powder together, what it will actually do is it will make the yellow then opaque. So you see then when you put that on the top, you actually will get the, so you see how the green will then sort of show, will show more on there. She just needs a little bit more. It's a little bit too much white there. 
but so you actually would get that. So you see it actually will make it opaque, see? And then you can put a little bit of green because what it, what it will actually do is it will almost just like mask out the background color and then you can just put some regular green on top of that. But see how that, but you see how then your color is going to be much more noticeable because on certain flowers like say anemones, you know anemone flower, sometimes they come in purple with white or they come in um, uh, red with white. So this is the technique you use using the white powder generally mixed with the green and then you can just brush that on the top because it will almost like mask out that background color. Okay, so that's a good little tip when you're doing, as I said, when we're using dust that we want to, um, that we want to obviously, um, as I said, end up being able to uh, create a sort of more of an opaque look. Now, of course, when you're dusting flowers, most of the time when I'm doing this in class, I would put gloves on. It's just because I'm using so many different colors. Um, and then the other thing is here, you know, it talks about brushes and we did talk about brushes a little bit. Now, generally speaking, you're going to use synth um, synthetic craft type of brushes, all right? So these brushes here are all made for like craft. Um, these particular ones like came from a craft store. I also will mention that it's not 100% it's not important, but I personally always prefer to buy um, brushes with plastic handles um, rather than, for example, wooden handles, all right? Because the, what will happen with wooden handles, when you wash them a lot, the paint will start to, you see how the paint chips off? Because when you put these into soak, what's gonna happen is the wood is gonna expand and then it's going to, as I said, you'll end up with the paint coming off, which this one here, you can see most of the paint has come off of this, all right? But as I said, so just when you're buying brushes, um, as I said, buying ones with plastic handles, like, you know, these are just little craft brushes uh, that I use a lot with just clear plastic handles. Um, and then, but as I said, this is a wooden one, which is fine, this is a Wilton one. But as I said, long term, the handles are going to probably lose their paint after a while. These particular ones here um, are actually have a, a, a silicone grip um, so they're obviously useful like if you have arthritis or people that are learning painting in say a retirement community or whatever these are good because you can grip onto them but i like these brushes um, and as i said these have a silicone tip on them but as i said you know so we use um, round brushes obviously several sizes for overall color and for flower centers like the center of a rose and then when you're dusting all over we use a round brush we use flat brushes all right so flat brushes like this uh, flat brushes are used when we want for darker overall color like on foliage so a lot of times and you have like ones like this which are flat but a little bit round but this would also so I use this one a lot this orange brush for example when I'm dusting over rose leaves or the hydrangea leaves or things like that I'll use this type of brush okay and of course this is also used when we put color on the edge of a petal so when we do things like your um, you know roses and flowers like that we're using this type of brush okay and then we also have like um, angled brushes, all right? So these are sort of flat but angled brushes, all right? So these ones are gonna be used for when we're cutting in um, on petals. And I'm gonna be showing you all of these things during this episode. And then you've got this little small flat brush, which is good for when you want just like a little accent on the bottom of a flower, okay, or on a leaf. So there are, as I said, there are different ones there. But um, you can, um, so this talks about, as I said, the, the dust. And then um, it talks about here about that obviously you can also, um, it's uh, so you can paint with these also and add to gum paste for colors, all right? Now, um, so those are your first type of dusting powder. Those are the most popular. And as I said, most companies uh, will call them petal dust or dusting powders. It's got a question. Uh, where do you suggest purchasing reasonably priced dusting brushes? Probably like um, from a craft store, um, you know, like in the U US, I would say like a Michaels or Hobby Lobby type of store. Um, you can get a pack. Um, also, like in UK, um, there's some different craft, you know, companies as well. You can buy things from online as well. And then, of course, a lot of the companies, you know, like PME in the UK, do sell brushes. They do sell brushes. Wilton sell brushes, but you could also find things on. But just look for craft brushes, right? The type you use for acrylics and things like that. So. You need to bring a range of dusting powder brushes to us. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I have a huge, I've got hundreds of brushes. You know, I just, when I see brushes, I just find them. And when you see them on sale and things like that, 
um, just just find those. But as I said, a lot of the craft um, craft companies, different companies sell craft brushes, so you can find them online. But as I said, or or a retail craft store. Now, um, then we move on to the next type of dust, which is compact dust. Now, this is something sort of relatively new um, on the market. There are a few companies now that have this. Uh, Sugar In was the first company to bring this out, called the Petal Palette, um, and actually uh, Paddy. Stavall, who lives here in the United States. So this is a petal palette, all right? And so this is a little bit like, if you think about like eyeshadow and makeup, um, this is your powders. And so these ones, um, you would use these directly from the, so you'd actually take those from the palette. So let's say, for example, you're doing like your little, um, uh, say like a little primrose, you want a darker yellow. So this is like a compact dust, and then you would then just put this into the middle of the flower like this. You see, so you put your yellow in there, like if you're doing, say, like a primula or a flower like that. And then if you wanted to put like a little pink on the edge of this, it does come with a brush. This particular one does come with a brush, all right? So it does come with a little flat brush. When you get it out, there we go. So it does come with a little flat brush. So I'll actually show you that. So you see, you can take this one here. And then these ones here, you see, then you could use this. So this could be used straight from the little palette here, all right? I said these are available through from Sugar In and also from from Patty. I did put the information on there. There are a couple of like websites on there. And so this is good. This is a good like starter uh, one to use. And then generally, what I would do is just take when you finish with that, I would just would take a napkin. And I would just like just pat it with the napkin, all right? That just gets rid of any loose dust. And then put the little plastic back on the top of this. Now, so for example, this comes with a brush, and I did discuss this in our first Q&A, which some of you may not have watched, but um, if you only have one brush, all right, and you had to do a flower with, let's say, like pink and yellow, all right, on, like I've just shown you. So what you then do is you take a, just like a jam jar, I've just used like a plastic jar, actually for some pi from pickles, so just I like the green lid on it. And, um, but uh, what you do is just put a little bit of cornstarch in the bottom of the jar, and then all you then do is you take your brush, so like let's say you put the yellow on 12 flowers, then you're gonna just use your, and just gonna swish around in the corn flour, and then you just brush that onto a napkin. And what that will do, that will basically clean, it acts like a dry shampoo, and it will then clean all the color out of the bristles. So then what I could then do is I could then take the pink and so change out to the other color. And if you're using like a paler color, do that first and then clean it in the corn flour cornstarch and then you're going to then use the secondary color. Now then once you've finished, all right, so once you've finished at the end of the project, then what I would normally do is I would always wash the brushes. Um, so what I do is I've just got a little bit of dishing, washing up liquid dish soap in there. So I just will put my brushes in and then obviously just put a little bit of hot water in there. And I just leave them in a couple of minutes just to soak and then I'm just going to just use usually a little dish soap on my hand and I just swish them around in a dish soap, rinse them really, really well. And uh, the other thing you can do is when you have bristles, like some of these brushes, like these ones, have these white bristles, so they're gonna get stained if you were using red or ruby. So sometimes I'll just put like one little drop of uh, bleach Clorox um, in the water, and that will just help to bleach out the, uh, bleach out the bris bristles, okay? So the light and the color, we, uh, we use the cornflower. You'll be able to watch the whole of this again, all right? So this will be, uh, but it's on your instructions as well. Just use cornflower cornstarch, all right? So the more powder you add, um, the, the lighter the color will be. So like I showed how to do, how to take the, in the beginning of the, the episode, I showed how to take yellow, just adding cornflower or cornstarch to it, it makes it lighter, okay? And the more corn, so you could take that way, way down to a really, really pale creamy yellow for a flower like, for example, a, um, a magnolia or a gardenia, okay? So anyway, so that, those are the, but the compacts, all right, so these are, I've also been quite honest about things here, all right, so the, the, obviously the nice thing about the pedal palette is great if you're going to a class or if you're just starting and you just want to get some basics, but the thing is the downside, there will be colors you use more than others, so just like buying an eyeshadow, um, if you were buying makeup and you were buying an eyeshadow palette, there's going to be colors you're going to use more than others, all right, so for example, 
work, you're going to use a lot more of the green than you would the baby pink probably. Okay, so that's the, the sort of the thing you have to just consider. Sometimes we're buying sets of things as well, and that applies even to buying sets of dust. But most of the companies that re sell regular dusting powders, a lot of them do do like sets. I know one of our members bought the set from Squire's Kitchen, and of course then you can buy just individual ones to back up. But they're going to be colors you use a lot more than others. And as far as like a lot of times I've had students ask me, what is the, you know, what color should you buy? It's really very personal. It's like, what colors do you like? I mean, what colors would you use for your clients, for friends and family? Um, but as I said, buying like just the concentrated darker colors is really a better way to go and just lighten them. And of course you can mix colors as well. So in some of my projects and in some of my videos, you'll see how I mix colors, all right? So I actually mix like, you know, like for example, um, when I'm doing certain flowers, I'll sometimes mix one to one ratio or two to one or different things. Like on the lily, it was three parts pink to one part plum uh, to make the stargazer um, base color, okay? Um, so, but as I said, so the compacts are great, but as I said, the downside, you're gonna probably end up with using all of some colors and not of others, all right? Um, but as I said, that's uh, paper, uh, petalpalettes.com. Um, next one we're going to talk about is going to be luster and pearl dust, all right? Now, luster and pearl dust, these are milled fine and contain mica, which is used in lipstick and eyeshadow. So generally, most of these are going to fall in that non-toxic uh, category, so there are and there's some edible companies, edible ranges of this. But you use super pearl on flowers for a waxy look after steaming. So like, for example, when we do like Stephanotis, we do gardenias, flowers like that, we're going to put the super pearl onto them. And then when you steam them, it's going to give a waxy look. So in Flower Pro, like the jasmine, um, as I said, the Stephanotis, you know, a lot of those white flowers, we put the pearl dust on first and then we then steam. We have another question. Um, eyeshadows uh, typically are going to be a little bit more waxy um, on them. They're not as dry, so I would not suggest using eyeshadows, but I must admit I haven't really like tried them to, to, to that extent. So, but also, but on craft, there might be something that could work and experiment with. And maybe if any of our crafters have tried using eyeshadows, uh, maybe you can comment on that um, on the uh, obviously thread from this uh, episode. But uh, as I said, these are because of the micro in there. So when you have the, these are the, as I said, this is like, for example, the rainbow dust super pearl here. And I'm just going to use a little, and you know these are these are also, um, as I said, cosmetic Q-tips. We talked about this in the Q&A, but these are also useful uh, when you're dusting flowers because you can actually also use those just to apply a little bit of color. Um, you buy these in the um, where the um, obviously eyeshadows and things are, but it's a cosmetic Q-tip. It's got a pointed end and this flat one. But sometimes when I dust the, the middle of a flower. I would just put like the, this into yellow, and then you see then when it goes into say the middle of a blossom like that, you just rotate it, you've got a little tiny yellow eye in there. So it's good if, you're, if you wanna have a little bit more control. I often use, as I said, these to, to do. And then the other way I use these, which is what I was talking about in the Q&A last week, is um, if you were dusting a flower, and let's say you got some, you know, on one of the petals you got too much pink, what you can actually do there is you can dip this end into alcohol, like either Everclear, which is grain alcohol or vodka, and then use it like a, and you actually can then use it as like a, as a sort of an alcohol swab, and that will actually get the dust off, okay? And then the alcohol will evaporate, and then you'll have a clean flower, okay? Um, and uh, so I use these for, for quite a bit, but just to show you here, just a little bit like a, you would on eyeshadow. So you see how these, this is a super pearl, all right? So you can see it's pearlescent, all right? And this is what's actually used in eyeshadow and lipstick to make it shiny, all right? And when we use this on flowers, all right? So when we use this on flowers, we use this. Um, when we do on the larger flower, like a calla lily, all right, we use, generally I use a pump brush, all right? So these are called pump brushes. They're actually made for mineral makeup, all right? And these work wonderful. And uh, I've used these on some of my videos. And when we do like large flowers, like for example, a calla lily, we're generally gonna use them with the cuff down. So when you brush that over the surface of your calla lily, obviously you're gonna brush it all over the surface of it. You're gonna get this sort of pearlescent dust all over the surface. We can also use for smaller, detail area, you can use the cuff down, mostly on cake. I use this for like when I do cookie stencils and things like that, I use this down. But this type of brush is not really suitable for a, let's say, dusting something like say a tuber rose here. 
Um, a couple of weeks ago I did for um, Cakeology, I did the uh, Tuber Roses. And, um, but here, because this won't get in, and plus also you're likely to probably break the petals there. But when you finish with this, you take the cuff and then you just put the little lid back onto there. And as I said, that is, as I said, called a, um, called a uh, said pump brush, okay? But um, those, those work very well. But so if you're gonna use the, the Super Pro, and of course I'm just showing you this on a plate, but you can also just take that onto a napkin as well. So then generally what you would do there is you just would take a smallish brush, okay? And then you just would dust the pearl dust just like we've done before, okay? And then you see when you put, when we put uh, steam on this, so then when the, hit, the steam hits this, this is what's gonna give you your flower is gonna give you its nice, um, it's gonna have this nice waxy look, all right? So we generally use this mostly on white flowers, all right, that obviously have like a high sheen. And they say when we steam that, it will become more waxy. Now it also talks here that um, luster dust, you can also reduce the shine by mixing with corn flour, corn starch. Now in some of my, in some of my, uh, um, not so much on Flower Pro, but in some of my uh, books and other videos and things like that, where I've used Super Pearl, what I'll sometimes do is use equal amounts of Super Pearl and uh, corn flour or corn starch. And so that would mean like a one to one ratio. And what that does is gonna cut the intensity. So because some brands of Super Pearl are gonna be really, really shiny, all right? So if you have a brand that's really shiny, you can cut it with corn flour, okay? Because remember, you don't wanna make it look too artificial. And you see then what you can do is you can just take the plate here, and you see then that can just go back into the, back into there like so. And you, of course, like we're using plastic plates, I mean, you can actually even wash these and then just re reuse those, okay? But those are just little disposable, um, disposable plate. Now, um, so that's using, as I said, Super Pearl, okay? Use a pump brush, brush for larger, simple shapes like calla leaves, smaller round brush for smaller flowers like shapes like gardenias. Now, um, you can also do um, rainbow dust paints, all right? So another way of creating that same effect would be to use rainbow dust. So this is a pearlescent, uh, paint, all right? Now again, several companies like Sugar In and other companies do do paints like this, but this is a pearlescent paint. These are again, totally edible here. So like for example, if you, so there's two ways to do this. This is called a click twist brush, which I use a lot in my classes because the convenience of this is you just twist this like this and then the paint comes into the end of the brush, all right? So then if you were going to do, for example, like this little flower here, then what you can actually do is you can actually just paint this over the top of it. Now this is gonna give a little bit more of a sort of a fantasy look to your flowers, but can be used if you want something with a high shine, okay? But you see how it's gonna give you that sort of really nice uh, pearlescent look onto there, okay? And um, now, then they also do a paint brush like the pot like this is called a pot. And for that one, you just would use a brush, all right? So if you're using that, you're just gonna use the brush from there and just gonna paint from the brush like this. I use these on cake for pearls and things like that. But this is very nice to use like on fantasy flowers or if you're doing like the pearlescent flowers. And this of course also comes in gold and silver. And uh, so this is a nice for, as I said, for craft application as well, all right? But um, this is the more economical way to buy it because you just wash the brush with water, it's water soluble because you can't refill this little brush. So this has got obviously a lot less in here. So this is convenient, but as I said, this is really the most, uh, as I said, economical way to buy the product. And these come in lots of different colors. Okay, and that company, uh, Rainbow Dust, as I said, they have uh, green, they have blue, they have pink, they have red, uh, they have a gold, they have a silver. So. They, uh, these are the, the gold and silver. So you see, I use these a lot, like when I do cookies. Uh, when I'm doing cookies, I use these a lot because they're totally edible. They're not gonna be as shiny as the metallics that I show you a little later, but obviously these, as I said, is going to be, will be totally edible. So if it's something like you're doing a little flower from the filler flower mold, you want to paint it gold, and you're gonna put it on top of a cupcake, this would be the way I would go, okay? Um, and then, um, but then, the way you do these is you dust this on, you paint this on first, then you let this dry a little bit, then you could dust, say, some yellow in the middle of this or some pink on the edge of it, but you just need to leave it a few minutes to dry, okay? And then um, the other way you can apply that is also there is like PME have a spray version of that. 
So this is a little bit, uh, sort of like it's quite expensive, all right, but again, if you don't do a lot of things, but here you just spray this like you would hairspray, but this is a pearlescent sheen, so you just spray this onto your, obviously use a protected surface, but just spray that onto your flower, onto your cake or whatever. Um, and as I said, you can also, when uh, Dawn does her airbrushing, she's gonna talk about airbrushing uh, with uh, pearl dust as well, okay? Um, and so you can also, um, you can also do these in a spray or an airbrush, all right? So there are companies that sell liquid. Um, so if you imagine it looks a bit like this and it's like a liquid pearl to go in your airbrush. It's an airbrush sheen. You shake it, you put it in your airbrush and then you spray that over your flowers. Um, so a lot of people that do say like have bakeries, they'll do in flowers like gardenias. They'll just spray them all with an airbrush with the pearl sheen and then they let them dry. Then you can dust the yellow in the center, a little bit of green on them. It's just a quick way for production work. Do we have another question? Nope. Oh, okay, all right, that's great. All right, and then um, um, also the luster dust come in many colors, but you can also use your own regular dust added to Super Pearl to create your own colors, saving money too. All right, you know, because I'm trying to also give you tips and things as well. Like, so for example, this is, um, this is like a luster dust in rose pink, all right? So it's a pale, it's a pale pink luster. You can get all different colors of uh, lusters. But so the thing is, is what we can do there is you can actually just take your regular luster dust. All right, so you can take this, of course you can mix this up in a little. And then you can just take your regular powders. So I'm gonna use here a little bit of pink. So I'll just take like a little bit of American Beauty pink here and just going to just mix this up. So see, I could just take a little bit of pink and I can mix this up into the luster dust. So now we have pink luster, all right? So you don't have to buy like every single color on the market because you know, there are hundreds of different colors. But see now, what we actually have is we have a, let me just show you that on the, show you that on the throat here. So you see now what I have is I have a pale pink luster. So this is a pearlized dust but this is going to be uh, pink pearlized dust, you see? This is actually on a pansy petal, so this is actually um, air drying clay. All right, but so the other score, you can do different colors, okay? So you just literally just use the, so really, to be honest with you, Super Pearl is really the only one you generally need in the lusters, and then you, of course, can just adjust that with your, um, with your uh, as I said, regular colors, okay? Um, and so those are, as I said, a little bit on, on using luster dust, okay? Now, like, so for example, rainbow dust, call it pearl white, um, like, you know, the one I was using here, which is this one here, is called super pearl. This is like what we sell as super pearl, um, and this is um, sugar art uh, brand. But as I said, so some of them, but it's basically like a pearlescent white. Now, in sugar rim ones, they actually call it silver, but it's like a white. But generally, you're gonna have a color chart, so you'll be able to see what you're looking for, for the colors. Now then, um, the next dust we come on to a sparkle dust. Now these have a more of a sparkly finish, all right? It's basically the same as the Super Pearl, but it's just, it's not milled as, it's milled, it's not milled as fine, okay? So when you have the, the Super Pearl, which is like the pearl dust here, so these really are going to give you a similar, um, as I said, they're, they're the same basic base, but what happens is, is that just that they have, the particles are a little bit bigger, okay? So you see when you, so here, you can see it's not milled as fine. So here, you actually get those more like little individual sparkly pieces. Now, I've used this on a lot of my Flower Pro videos, all right? So when, for example, I do my hydrangeas, um, I, if you watch the hydrangea video, I use like a base color. And then I use some of this dust as almost like a finishing dust. So what that does, it goes onto the flower um, afterwards. So like, for example, when I did my green uh, hydrangeas in book one, you'll see how you've got those little, like almost like slight little particles there. And what it is, is reflective, okay? So we, the difference between the two products are that when we use generally Super Pearl, that always goes on first. And that is an important point because when you think of this, it's like makeup, it's like your foundation, all right? You put a foundation on your skin first, then you build your other colors and your blusher and your eyeshadow and your lipstick on top of it. You always wanna put this on first because this is your like underneath, this is your foundation, all right? Whereas white sparkle dust is normally used 
as a finishing dust. So that goes on last, all right? So when I do my calories, if you're going to watch my calorie video, I like the purple calorie. I put the lavender purple color, the darker aubergine, and I use some of this on top. Now, you can also, just like with the luster dust, you can also color that as well. So for example, this is, um, for example, uh, lime sparkle, okay? So you see, this is a lime sparkle dust. And, um, but again, what I could do is if I wanted to make my own lime sparkle, then all I would do there is I take a little bit of the sparkle dust here. And just using like little plastic spoons is usually the way I would go. And then I could add like, for example, a little bit of my, I can use a little bit of the pale apple, the light apple green one in here. So see, I can put a little bit of that into there. a little tiny bit more of that in there and you see so then then what I've done now is I've actually made just like a sort of uh, my own version of this you see and then of course you could just mark this just use all oh, these are just little as a condiment ones just put lime sparkle on there so if you're mixing up colors um, as I said don't you know throw them away just keep them because next time you can use those and so that could be used as I said for as an alternative to using white sparkle all right so that that would be how you would use sparkle dust but so sparkle dust as I said just have bigger particles so they're more sparkly than the um, so think of like your eyeshadow is like your super pearl and your pearl dust and then the um, as I said the uh, sparkle dust will give you more of a sparkly finish No, if you, rem if you remember watching my making the scratch paste, I would normally just take a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening and dissolve the powder into that. For very, very pastels, but as I said, I would generally, if I'm using the dusting, remember I showed on the making the gum paste, use dissolving the powder, like the red powder in the vegetable shortening. So I generally would just take a little bit of powder, um, a little bit of vegetable fat um, shortening together and just mix them together, put that into your white paste to say color it pale pink, all right? But for very, very pastel, you could get away with using it straight as is. But anyway, so that would be sort of how you would use the sparkle dusts, all right? Um, so those are your, um, as I said, your, um, your matte finish ones, your compact, your, uh, said, luster pearl dust and your sparkle dust. So then we're going to move on to um, next, a little bit more fantasy, all right, but something I do use in different applications, but more so on fantasy flowers. But I do like to use these on foliage, all right, like holly and on fall leaves. And those are the hologram dust. Now, this is also sometimes called disco dust, all right. And um, so these are, just drop something there. So these are, as I said, um, these are called, um, as I said, hologram dust. So this is like a non-toxic version of glitter, okay? So remember, glitter is made from plastic, craft glitter, all right? But these, this product here, let's get the lid off of that. You can see how it's going to, so this is like a non-toxic, and uh, a lot of like chocolatiers use this um, on um, people that do, for example, like candy apples and things like that. So this is a non-toxic. So generally, something being called non-toxic means it's not gonna harm you in small quantities but you wouldn't want to consume like the whole pot of this, all right? But a little tiny bit on the edge of a leaf, um, or as I said, a little decoration onto a cake, like a snowflake or whatever, um, this as their product. But these come, um, you know, these come in gold and silver. Um, now some of the companies, like for example, here in the US, this is, uh, they call it disco uh, dust. Um, so this is the sugar art, but uh, they have, they actually have them in a little shaker, right? So obviously you just open this, you take the top off of it, and you see it's already in a little shaker. Um, so this is a fairly new thing that some companies are doing that do this type of product, all right? Um, what I have done up till now, obviously, is to use a little small shakers like this. Um, or if you go to like the dollar or pound store, these are just plastic um, picnic set for a salt and pepper shaker, all right? And so I just found this works really well. But this is the best way to apply this product, okay? Now, um, when we use this, there are different, lots of other ways we can use this in cake. But as far as like for flower application, for hologram dust, this is a non-toxic glitter. Um, I, I only use usually on fantasy flowers. And you use this by, um, by spraying or brushing with spray lacquer or confectioner's glaze. And then you sprinkle onto the petals. Leave them to dry, shake off the excess. This product will not stick unless you use glaze or spray lacquer. So for example, if you were doing, um, I'm just gonna cover my table here. 
All right, so like if you wanted, say, a client wanted a fantasy flower where they want like basically like say a peony, but they want like, for example, the petals to all be glittery, all right? Um, or for example, they were doing, uh, you were doing a, say for example, like an antler, or you're doing, as I said, a flower, so you can use these in all, all different ways. I'm just gonna show you here on a little antler, but this could also be a petal as well. So what you do is you're gonna use your spray lacquer, okay? So you're gonna use your spray lacquer like this. Um, and so, because this powder, it, you, it won't stick, so you have to make this product sticky. Now for a craft, if this was a, say for example, like air drying clay, you could obviously use like a spray varnish, but you could also brush the glaze onto this as well, all right? So you can use the, also the brush on confectioner's glaze, so you could also brush this on, this is the glaze as well. So you can either spray it or brush it on. I'm just gonna show you the brush method first. Uh, the spray method. So you're just going to spray this over the top, just do this on a piece of paper. But this is lovely to use on, as I said, like for example, things like the antlers. So this is like the snow sparkle. And you see, you're just going to just sprinkle this onto the top of this. All right. Just going to shake that. So you see how then you see how you get this iridescent look onto your antlers. So this is beautiful, you know, if you're doing, as I said, certain things with flowers. So this looks, this one is called snow sparkle. So it's got like, like almost like a bit like mother and pearl colors. So this is really pretty to use on, say, like white petals. If you did, like, for example, like all of your peony petals in white, and then you spray lacquer them and sprinkle them, um, and then, as I said, you assemble your peony, it's going to have that beautiful wintry look. So if you're doing, especially, like, as I said, say, like on a winter cake, very, very pretty to use, all right? And then when you finish that, you just, of course, you take your, you take your loose powder, and then your loose powder, so just do this on paper, and then your loose powder will go back into the container here. There we go. And then you see you use very, very little of that product, but that is just done, but that's called the Snow Sparkle. Now I use this um, product also um, sometimes on leaves, all right? So this is nice like on fall, autumn leaves. I love to apply a little glaze on the edge and sprinkle with a copper one or on holly and pine cones, you can do the same with a snow sparkle. So the one I've just shown you looks really pretty on your like, edge of your holly leaves or on your pine cones. So on your pine cones, you can actually just put like little bits of glaze and then sprinkle it and then just shake it off, okay? And that will give you that sort of really nice wintry look. But on, um, for example, like a fall leaf, if you were doing, let's see, like Japanese maple, all right? So this is done with my Flower Pro maple leaf. So here you would take some confectioner's glaze. And of course, if you're doing this for craft application, if these were air drying clay, just use clear nail polish, all right? And of course, with air drying clay, you could use, of course, regular glitter. But remember, this is, um, this is used for, obviously, uh, if we're talking about non-toxic here, mostly for cake, all right? But, um, but these, a lot of these techniques I'm showing, showing you, you can use on. So you see here, what you could do, like on the edge of the leaf, you can just put like just a little bit of the glaze, just sort of here and there, on the edge of the leaf, like that. And then this is some of the copper one. You see, so then when you, when you dust this on, so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna dust this on. Okay, I'm just gonna shake that. But you see how then you'll have, you see how I've just picked up the edge of the leaf with just this beautiful copper, okay? And uh, this is really a really nice way to, to do a petal. And you could even use this technique if you wanted to, to make like the edge of a rose glittery. You could actually just paint that carefully on the rose petals, sprinkle it, and then you'll actually get like gold glitter on the edge of the petals. Because sometimes a bride is not about realistic flowers, they're a little bit more about fantasy flowers. But as I said, that's just how you apply um, that, that product, all right? So you're just gonna apply that like that. Um, and then if you were doing, let me just show you here, like I had a, so for example, like here, got a hydrangea. So I've got this in green. Should I put this on a napkin here? There we go. Obviously, I, you put this back in the container as well. But again, you see, you can just brush this over. But so like if you wanted to do like the whole of a, you wanted to do like glittery hydrangeas. So this is the, you see, this is the green one here. So again, see, I could actually just sprinkle that on like that. Again, just gonna tap that off and see how that would make it, as I said, glittery, all right? But you know, so obviously, because sometimes a client wants that sort of bling look, so this is something that you can do um, on your flowers and use that in different ways. 
So that is using the that is using the hologram dust, or as I said, like disco dust. So that just sort of shows different ways of using that product. I'm just going to move these out of the way. But just you know, always try and work on a protected surface because you know, and the glitter will get um, it will get over things. All right, but generally speaking, once that is finished, that that's going to seal it. All right. What you can also do is if you really want to make sure that everything is sealed. All right is you can also just take the, once the product is, once it's finished, all right, you could just pop this onto, onto here, all right, so because if you want to make sure you don't get any glitter on your cake or whatever, and then again, you can just then very lightly spray over the top of this, all right, and that is going to sort of hold it. Now, if you were doing this on air drying clay, all right, you could use uh, then you could just spray this over with your unscented hairspray, you see, because if this was air drying clay, this will act as your fixative, all right, like we use to hold our dusting powders on. You could just lightly spray your air drying clay with your, um, as I said, with your unscented hairspray, and that will, as I said, keep the pieces on. But you see how it's really a beautiful technique to use, and as I said, these could be used totally, of course, in air drying clay. But as I said, on air drying clay, of course, you could use just regular home uh, glitter, the craft glitter. Um, but whereas this is a non-toxic, this is made to use on uh, food items. And uh, in some countries, in some competitions, that's not allowed, all right, you know, because some, also some cake competitions, I judge, like especially like pastry competitions and things, everything has to be totally edible. Um, but uh, as I said, so different countries are going to have different rules. But on things like branches, you know, you're doing um, pine needles, you know, things like that. And like when you do the pine needles, when I show my pine needles, when I do the, um, using the confectioner's glaze on the uh, floral tape and then using the sugar, you could also make them more frosty looking by using, you can actually put some of the snow sparkle dust into your sugar and that will actually give them a real sparkle. All right, so it's a fun, fun one to use on pine cones and things as well. And um, so then, um, so that's a little bit about that. So obviously you can do this, and so on holly leaves, you could add a little bit of confectioner's glaze and use the snow sparkle. It looks really pretty on say a, a green holly leaf as well. Now next we're going to talk about metallic dust. Um, you know, paint over items that do not need excessive handling using lemon or orange oil, natural or artificial. This can be used on the edge of petals, especially the edge of a rose. So a lot of times, you know, you'll see sometimes gum paste roses. I'm just going to show you on a red rose, but like a white rose with gold on the edge. Um, and so what we do here, we're going to use the confectioners. Uh, we're going to use the orange oil. Now, generally, I would suggest just using a little plastic dish. Um, these are just like used for a little dessert thing, dessert cakes and things like that, um, or like a little container like this, because then what you can do is you can put the lid on this, or this you could slide into a zip top bag, and then you can store that till the next time you use it, all right? Now, um, these are, as I said, um, like gold, this is the like highlighter gold dust, all right? So generally speaking, these are, as I said, un unlike the rainbow dust, which are totally edible, these ones are generally used just for decorative pieces. Like, you could use them for the lettering, a happy birthday on a cake, you could obviously, but as far as for sugar flowers, again, you're not gonna eat a sugar rose because it's got a wire in it and things like that. So these are totally fine to use on cake. So again, you just would take your, so your gold powder, so I'm gonna take my, little bit of my gold powder here. I'm gonna put this into a little dish like that. And then other, other little um, like spoons you can, you can get, you can buy little spoons like this. These are uh, little measuring spoons, but these are useful as well. This is a smidgen pinch and, uh, and a, uh, sorry, this, this one here is a yeah, smidgen pinch uh, spoon, but they're little tiny mini spoons. You can find these on Amazon and that, but these are also useful. And obviously you can just wash them. But also when you go to um, like some coffee shops like McDonald's and places like that, they have the little coffee, tiny coffee spoons. Those are very useful as well um, for using for your dust. Now we're gonna use here, um, citrus oil, okay, and it can be natural or artificial, meaning that this is, for example, natural oil of orange, okay, 
This is um, artificial orange oil, okay? It just means this has got real orange oil in it. This is obviously just orange flavors. For what we're doing here, it doesn't matter. Um, you can also get like large bottles of this. This is just, as I said, a uh, large bottle. But um, what I would recommend is put in your oil, all right? So put your oil uh, into a little dropper or you can just get like, like, for example, companies like candy flavoring companies have little droppers that fit into the bottle like this, you see? and that means you have a little dropper bottle. Now, generally when you're using, um, when you're using oils like this, you wanna keep brushes just for this, all right? Um, and so what you then do, now a lot of people that paint with metallics, all right, what they do is they'll use lemon extract, all right, or they use vodka. Now the thing with vodka, it goes on very streaky, all right? And the thing with lemon extract, lemon extract is, this is actually ingredients, 90% alcohol, all right, high, this is actually like an Everclear alcohol and then natural oil of lemon. So the thing is it evaporates pretty quickly. So I like to use the actual lemon oil or orange oil. Now we wouldn't use like olive oil or vegetable oil because it just won't work in the same way, but we're gonna use the oil and then I'm gonna put just a little bit of the oil into here. And you're just gonna paint this. And then you see, so you wanna make this and then but you have plenty of time then. So then if you were painting onto a rose, onto a petal there. You see, you can actually then just paint onto the edge of the petal like this, so just to come around like that. And you see, so you could do, um, you know, like a white rose or an ivory rose with gold painted on the edge of it. But you see how you're gonna get that sort of beautiful color onto there. Of course, you know, this is just like a little bud, all right? So that, would, so that technique of using the metallic with the orange oil, you use that on things that uh, you don't have to really handle because we don't actually physically have to handle this, all right? So you're just gonna just go over the surface of your edge of your petals um, or whatever flower you're doing with the gold on there. And then that dries and of course you have a nice, if the customer wants this sort of look, you can use this on the edge. Um, if you were doing for example, like a flower, and you're doing sort of something like in the middle of the flower here. So we're gonna do now a little bit of gold in there. I'm just gonna just bring like a little bit of gold down the middle of the petals there, you see, so you can do that sort of effect, all right? So you can use this, and of course, like if you wanna do around the edge of the, so you wanted to do like white and gold, you could put like a little bit of gold around the edge of your petals here. All right, so you see how you've now turned your little filler flower into more of a fantasy flower, okay? But it's something, as I said, a lot of brides, and of course you might want somebody that wants the whole rose gold. Now, um, little tips there for that. If you were painting something gold, you would make it in yellow. So if I was gonna make a whole rose gold, all right, I would paint it with, uh, make it in yellow paste, and then, or in air drying clay, then you paint it gold. And of course you'd paint it before you put any calyx on it. And then if you were doing something silver, you want to start off with gray, all right? So that's the, always the thing, foundation. We use gray for silver. We use um, also as a yellow for gold. Now a color that's quite popular now is like rose gold. So this is like a rose gold, like a little brooch. Um, rose gold, generally I start off with a peachy color. So if you actually start off with like a peach color, uh, that's generally the best. So you see like rose gold, you'd make it in like a peach, a little bit like the blush color we made the David Austin rose. And then see then when you paint something that's old uh, rose gold, you start off with that peachy color, yellow, gold for your gold and gray for silver. And then, um, so that's even, and then these you just obviously put this, just slide this into a little plastic bag and you'll be able to then reuse that. Um, and then all you do, next time you use this, you just add more of the um, orange oil to this or the lemon oil. And then when you clean your brush, just use a little bit of dish soap on here because it's got oil in it and then just dry that and just keep that generally with this just to use for this. Because you've now got oil on this brush, that means if you washed it and you didn't get all the oil out of it, when you come to use it with dusting powders, it's gonna start to streak, okay? You're gonna get like that sort of effect. So we have another question. Can you make clay spray paintings over oils? Over the what, sorry? You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You would never, because, because the oil, you don't need anything on top of that, you know, so. 
So because when you're doing something metallic, you're not, you're making it more fantasy looking. So you wouldn't use spray on lacquer on top of that. Okay. It's not going to, that will be fine. Now the thing with oil, all right, the thing with the oil technique, like if you were handling this a lot, which I mean, you don't have a, ever have to handle that because you're not really touching it. But like, because when the oil dries, the natural oil we have in our skin, if you were to excessively touch that, you actually would remove the, you'd remove the oil from there. All right. But generally as I said, so when I'm painting like pine cones with metallic or the edge of roses, that is what I normally do is using the orange oil um, or lemon oil. All right. But also it does have on here that if you are, um, but if you are going to, if you're wanting to you use it on things you need to handle once dry, then you'd use confectioner's glaze. So that would be like, let's say we're doing a peony, all right? So this, I mean, I've just got this is pale pink, all right? But let's say, for example, you're making an oriental peony and your customer wants it totally gold, okay? Of course, this would be made in yellow, okay? And then what you would then do is you would take your, um, you take your um, peony, of course, you're going to paint all 25 petals first, let them dry and then assemble them. So there we use a slightly different technique and that is using some confectioner's glaze. So I'll actually use here some copper color, which is a little bit like the rose gold color. And uh, when you're using, uh, when we're doing uh, some of the, the colors, sorry, I'm just going to get my little spoon here. There we go. There we go. So when you use the, so this is like the copper color. Of course, these different companies do like the rose gold and things as well. Now also you sometimes mix the metallics just like you would dusting powders. This is for example, like a vintage silver I made for a project a couple of years like vintage French silver. So what I actually did there is I used two parts silver and one part gold. So it actually gives you that, um, as I said, a little bit more like a vintage silver, like an old French silver, not, not, too, sh not too silvery, okay? Um, and so you can actually mix that. Um, so you can actually also mix like the gold and the bronze together. But here, what we do is we use confectioner's glaze. So this is our confectioner's glaze. And then the easiest way I found to use this is to actually put this into a, uh, put this into a bottle, like a little dropper bottle. And um, so I have a little dropper bottle here. And what this means, when this is dry, this is going to be a little bit more like, think of a little bit like a nail polish, okay? So it means you can then handle it and you're not going to take the, so you're just going to just paint the, going to put this in. And remember, when we use confectioner's glaze, this is not water soluble. So there are two options. You can either use a paintbrush and then you need to clean this with like, for example, like an acetone, non-acetone nail polish remover, a brush clean isopropyl alcohol. You can also use brushes like this. So a lot of times, you know, you get 10 of these for a pound or 10 of them for a dollar. So they're very inexpensive. So a lot of times I would paint my 25 petals and just throw this type of brush away. Now also these brushes, these type of brushes you buy, like for example, for kids crafts, these are useless for dusting flowers, okay? Because they won't pull any powder if you're trying to use like dry powders, but they're good for painting with, all right? But just to show you, so you see what you then do is you paint you mix the paint up. Now again, you can put this in a little jar with a lid. So that means that then you can store this and the next time you do this. But I've made this, this is like a copper, but it's said very similar to a rose gold color. But I said you start off with a pale pink or a peachy color. And then see here, what I would then do is you paint over the surface. You can of course just do this on the edge. But if you were gonna do like the whole of your, you wanted to make a totally metallic of course, I would probably recommend putting gloves on for this, all right? But if you were wanting to make a totally metallic uh, peony for a customer, of course, you could do the, do the other side as well, you see? And then what you would then do is you put these in your styrofoam block, you let them dry, and it means then when you're handling it, once this is dry, just like, for example, this one, you see that won't come off because I did this one with glaze, you see? And so the glaze, when it dries, is going to give you almost a completely sealed um, technique, all right? Whereas obviously the orange oil, if you excessively handle with the orange oil, would come off. But generally, if you're just putting color on the edge, I would use orange oil. But if you're painting a hole of something and on something like the peony where we need to handle it, all right, this would be better because then when you start taping this and putting it together, if you use the oil, you're going to take some of the oil off on your fingers, okay? Yes? Air drying clay, could you use embossing powders in the same way? 
Um, I believe so. I'm not, I haven't used a lot, you know, Jack Heath and Karen and some of our amazing design team members that do craft. So maybe if uh, Karen or any of you are watching from the design team, if you can maybe, because I know like Jack Heath, you know, because obviously I've seen her work a lot with Katie Sue, obviously at Katie Sue headquarters, uses a lot of the embossing and, or, um, and uh, so some of our other, Noreen as well, does a lot of with the embossing powders and Kerry's done some with embossing powders. But I'm not really sure how um, maybe one of you from design team or somebody could does uses those could maybe give some suggestion to members. But as it, I'm really using mostly, obviously these are all more cake related, not so much craft things, okay? But I see how you're gonna get this beautiful, um, this beautiful metallic. And it takes about 15 minutes to dry. But you could imagine also, that would be a nice alternative, like say for a 50th wedding anniversary. What you could then do is you could take your, um, make your leaves, um, your rose leaves say in yellow gum paste, flower paste, paint those completely gold, then you could have yellow roses. So it's a nice way of adding that little touch for say a, a 25th wedding anniversary, 50th wedding anniversary, you know, customer who wants a little bit of bling um, on something. And so that is using the metallic, um, that's using the metallic powders with the confectioner's glaze, all right? But as I said, I, I never use, um, I never use just vodka or lemon extract with the, with the um, metallics. I always use, as I said, the orange or lemon oil all right, and then, or also, as I said, confectioner's glaze, because those ways, um, that will give you a much, much, it's much more fluid to paint with, uh, with the oil, okay? Um, and then the last little part I wanna talk about is going to be, um, and then I'm gonna just show you some of the different effects with brushes, but uh, the fragrance powders. Now, this is something I've used on some of my classes, all right? These are um, a powder, and what these are, these are actually like powdered, um, it's a company called More Than Cake, which I've put the website on there. And, uh, but these, this is a floral, these are floral fragrances. This is like a rose, there's a rose, there's a peony, there's a sweet pea. And these are nice for sugar or for craft. And when we use this product, all right, what you actually do there is you take, this is made from like organic roses. So this is used, you can use this in macaron batter, you can use it in ice creams. I've used this in glaze for donuts. I've used it in petit four glaze. I've used it in uh, cake uh, batter. So you can flavor buttercreams with it. But as I said, this is a, a product that, uh, as I said, this is made from organic rose petals. So it has a very, very strong, beautiful rose fragrance. So what you can do here is you can take a little bit of this rose powder. This is an American company. I do believe they have some English distributors um, and uh, Kathleen Lang, who has a royal icing mix, uses this also in royal icing. So it's nice to use in royal icing, but they also have one called Strawberry Patch. They have Lemon Tree and some other, other fragrances as well. So then like, for example, if you were going to use um, your, like this would be like the color I use for my David Austin rose, you just can mix that in with your, and then if you're using this, like say on a gardenia, because they do a gardenia one, you can actually uh, just mix this in with your super pearl, you see? And then when you, but then when you dust this like onto your, you know, obviously this is like the color we did for the David Austin rose. When you dust this onto your David Austin rose, but literally when you smell, you smell this, it smells like an English rose, okay? And that smell will last for a couple of days. But what's really nice, like if you were doing this for say a gift for somebody, if you put this rose in say a box or a container, um, this is air drying clay, but then when the customer, when your friend opens it, whatever, it's gonna smell like real roses. So it's almost a little bit like, as I said, a room, but uh, you can um, just as I brush this on, but as I said, it has a very, it smells just like an English rose, like a, a beautiful garden rose. So it is a product that you can mix with. And I just wanted just to show you those because something you might come across, but you can mix these with your powders or with your pearl dusts um, to use on flowers to give them a nice natural fragrance. All right, and as I said, that particular one is the uh, rose, which actually is my favorite. They do have a sweet pea one, so you could use it on sweet peas. They have peony, um, they have different lily and things like that, gardenia as well. Um, so those are, um, as I said, uh, some fragrances and they can use in, as I said, baking, but also can use them in other things. And then just on, um, on the brushes, you know, obviously we talked a little bit about the round brushes used for soft overall coloring and flower centers. You know, so when we're doing, um, when we're using the round brushes, all right, so the round brushes, we're gonna use those for obviously when you're dusting flower centers. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the pink here. So I'm gonna use some, actually I'll use some fuchsia here. Okay. 
you know, so if you were going to if you were going to use this um, on a flower, you know, like obviously a round brush, like if you're doing roses, when we've done our roses before, we use this like in the center of a flower. So when you're doing like in the middle of a flower, you would use um, this, the, the round brush. But of course, you know, like if you're doing something like that size, like with the yellow, you take the pale yellow and you go in the middle, all right? So it's used for the middle or like, for example, for a rose, you use that in the middle of your rose. Um, so round brushes and then flat brushes are used for the edge of petals, all right? So like for example, when we did the, the hibiscus, we used the uh, edge for the petal. So when you're doing your like hibiscus, you're going to use, you know, which we obviously you can see this on the videos, but just to go through this. So generally we use a flat brush then for the, for the edge. So this is like a fuchsia color. But see, so then when you do your, you, you brush with your brush like this. Now there, and um, then what a lot of times when I do this, so when you actually watch um, next Monday, when you watch the pansy, you'll see how I actually use the flat brush like this. And then I use the small green brush. So this one is good. Um, this like a little angle brush when you want to sort of get just, especially like on say the pansy because it's smaller, but when you want to sort of bring in like stripes, you're going to use the brush like this and just to sort of give you those like stripes and also like on the lisianthus as well you see so so you can use it but you can also if you don't have like a small angled brush like that you can do the whole thing and then you can just cut in with that same brush but just don't load too much color onto it all right and so that's sort of the technique we use with the flat brush or as I said the angled flat brush okay so those would be used for um, for that and then of course the um, a little small brush, um, you know, generally, which you see on a lot of my videos, like I just use this for the base of a petal. So when I'm dusting just a little bit of color, like on the bottom of a flower, I'm gonna generally use, just use a small brush like this, all right? And, uh, but you're, you know, obviously, um, with each of the episodes, we're going to be covering lots of different, um, as I said, variations on that. So when we do the, uh, for example, like the Lysianthus, which will be actually a live class, you know, that will be in two weeks time, but, You'll see here on the Lysianthus that I've dusted the, uh, when I dust the, the flowers here and the buds, see like the, the bud, the flower is made in this very, very pale green color. But then what I've done here is I've dusted, as you'll see in the class and on the directions, you're gonna be brushing the green only about a third of the way down, all right? Then the, the darker green is gonna go a third of the way up. So what it actually means is the, the color in the middle is our original color. So that's where sometimes, you know, starting off with the right shade, is, is important because if you make it two, you're not gonna get that contrast, all right? Um, and that's just something that will come with experience. But so dusting is really not, not difficult, but the important thing with dusting is, is having the right brushes, all right? You remember I said you wanna use obviously round brush or a flat brush or an angle brush. So just like you would for painting a wall, you wouldn't paint a large wall with a, like a two and a half centimeter, one inch paintbrush, you're generally gonna use a large brush or a roller. So it's very similar to painting and, and other things as well, watercolors and oils using the right brushes for the right job. Um, you know, so we've talked a little bit about, you know, type of brush you wanna use is just like a craft synthetic type of brush used for acrylics or general craft. Um, you don't want to use generally natural hair brushes because they're very expensive. You go and buy a squirrel hair brush. You know, the thing is because also they have natural oils, just like if you washed your hair twice a day, every day, it's gonna get sort of dry. If you're washing natural hair brushes on a regular basis like we do for dusting flowers, what's gonna happen is you're gonna strip all the oil out of them. So you're just gonna use, as I said, craft brushes. And then the brushes you use for oil colors, those are more of a bristle brush. Those are too stiff, all right? Um, and then another type, the other type of brush that some of my students ask me about, I like makeup brushes, because you can buy pretty inexpensive in a lot of stores, big box stores and that, like makeup brushes. And they will work okay, but generally speaking, a lot of them have got too soft of bristles. And of course, a lot of makeup brushes are really a too bit, bit bulky, like a blusher brush and things like that. But as I said, so, but generally you just, you know, from a craft store, online craft store is where I would normally recommend buying your brushes from. Um, and as I said, just, you know, have an assortment. And then also, you know, when we did the uh, first Q&A and, and when we did the equipment um, episode, 
I talked about using a food dehydrator. You know, once I wash my brushes, I just put them in the food dehydrator to dry them, and then they'll be ready for use. But just remember those little tips like using the corn flour, like or cornstarch, like a dry shampoo. It's a great way to uh, clean your brushes between colors. So if you only have one flat brush and you need two different colors, and then wash them at the end. Um, and uh, remember, as with all of the other episodes, you know, this is going to be on there. And if you have any particular other questions related to uh, this episode, um, please don't hesitate to post those on there. Um, and then on Thursday, you know, the lesson on Thursday is going to be uh, making a, uh, going to be making basket toppers. All right, so I'm going to be showing you how to make these. These are actually made out of styrofoam, out of a styrofoam cone. I'm going to show you different sizes and talk about different, different styles of bus, uh, baskets, like rustic style. But this is a great way to make a uh, topper. Um, this one was done in air drying clay. So this little um, basket there I've done in air drying clay with air drying clay sweet peas, jasmine, and hydrangeas in. And this would make a beautiful self-contained gift, all right? So rather than doing it like in a vase, this makes a very, very cute. And this, of course, could be used on top of a cake as a topper, and then it could be taken off and kept by the client. So this would be lovely for, say, like an anniversary cake or an engagement cake with a blue and pink on it. And then you could actually take this off, and then the client could keep this. So I'm going to show you how I make these baskets. Um, and then, as I said, then next Monday we have the um, episode on the pansies so we're going to be making pansies so you'll be able to see that uh, that is actually going to be a video all right so I've already filmed that filmed that last night but the basket is a live one and then uh, on the uh, week on Thursday I'm going to so next Thursday I will be then showing you how to make containers so I'm actually going to show you how to make like vases and containers and also how to make a flower pot topper so um, on the pansy I've actually used a real flower pot but I'll show you also how to make an air drying clay one of those or a sugar one which is fun for putting a flower in and uh, so I hope everybody enjoyed today's episode and as I said till Thursday sweet wishes and I'll see you real soon take care everybody bye bye